Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Welcome to another episode of Broad Motherfucking Topics. I'm your host, Kim Congdon, here with my co-host. Alex Scarlato. Hi, Kimmy. Hi, baby girl. How are you? I'm good. I feel like I've seen a lot of you today already, but I do appreciate that, like, I feel like we've chosen, like, almost matching shirts, like, the same color scheme. It's pretty cute. It's true. We just left Valeria's podcast. Um, It was really fun. We didn't mean to match, right? No. Not at all. It's just uh, the universe. We didn't mean to match, and everybody, I feel like everybody probably thought that we did on purpose. Um, but yeah, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Alex? What do you think of the pod? Um, I enjoyed the last 2.75 years of my life that I spent on Larry Bay's podcast. I thought it was, it was a fun time. It Listen, really fun. Larry Bay's podcast is so sweet. It's called Let's Get Loud. First of all, it's fucking good energy, like amazing energy. Every single person is just like chilling there, super happy, super happy to be there. Very good vibes. Really good vibes. You should go listen to the podcast. Literally, their entire podcast is something I would never do. It's just selfless. The entire podcast, they just promote the comics on it. Yeah, it's just they're just like they're just like two nice people promoting other promoting their friends and it's beautiful and then there's like a chat in between and some games and stuff it was great it's also the longest podcast i've ever done in my life yeah it was a lot i mean kim and I, like i'm concerned about this show right now because like i've just i've been staring at kim all day just you know all day, i've been not- talking to each other for the past two and a half hours like, at, the po- at the end of, at the end of larry's podcast i was like thinking i was like damn we like I was like, we're good. We have to. Can we borrow some of the things we said? Because me and Alex are out like we're not doing much during the one week we have in between podcasts. Like I can't be giving up all my stories. I actually feel like I got closer to you over those last two and a half hours. Like I haven't mm-hmm. seen you for two and a half hours in such a long time. It's true. It's true. It was really but fun. It's a good show. You it's a great show. It really is a great show. Go check it out. Um, and thank you to Larry for having us on. That was awesome. Mm hmm. Um, and so Josie, shout what's out to new Josie, with you? I love her. What? Josie's dope. Shout out to Josie. Yeah, shout out to Josie. She's awesome. Um, you you had an interesting night, right, Alex? I don't know what went on. First of all, let me tell you, I know nothing about the elections, the Legion of Skanks elections. I'm sorry, I haven't been really keeping up to date with what's been going on over at LOS, but I know that there was an election for the president of Legion of Skanks, right? And the election took place last night? The election election night took place, yeah, two days ago on Monday where everybody sent in their votes. And then Bobby and I had the honor of staying up all night on a Monday night counting um, counting votes, no. figuring out who the winner was. Yes, we were up until was- like 7.30 in the morning. It was no. wild. How um, many votes were there? Like over 5,000 votes uh, oh, alone. Shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, so, I mean, I don't know about Bobby, but I went into last night's show delirious, like absolutely not fully myself. Um, just like trying to stay on track, keep mm-hmm. it together, right. whatever. And like, uh, first half of the show, it just like, I felt a weird energy. I was like, I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like there's like a weird energy happening and I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, but as things unfold, and, and also if you – Legion of Skanks comes out before this. Like, I feel like if you listen to this show, you probably also listen to Legion of Skanks. But if you don't, like, spoiler alert, I guess. Um, but, man, it turns out that over the entire course of the episode, everybody was looking around the table trying to dose each other. <laughs> and that's where the weird energy was coming from. So – about like uh, late into the show, Lewis reveals that he dosed Ari with uh, what? Like LSD. Okay. In a beer. Okay. And um, he, he reveals it like under the setting of Ari 
kind of staring off into space for like the last 10 minutes. Like it was starting to become a thing where even I was like, oh, Ari's kind of talking further away from his mic. Like what's going on? Like is he getting, I, I felt like something might've been up, whatever. Okay. Um, and Lewis reveals that he dosed Ari uh, and Ari like convinced everyone that he was feeling it and not doing well. And like for about five <coughs> minutes, everyone was convinced that Ari was dosed. But in reality, poor, sweet, innocent, never hurt anybody in his whole entire no. life, Big J Okerson ended up drinking that particular beer. He's never done acid before in his whole entire life. Oh, no. And, and to fucking add insult to injury, he came in last in the presidential election. What? Yes. And, and so that was announced. And then poor Big J just gets like hella dosed. And uh, it was wild. It was just such a wild night. What a wild episode. Sorry, my mom's yelling at me because I'm ashing on her couch. Oh, uh, that's like reasonable for her to yell, like yell louder. She, she, she can't ash there. I get it's a black couch, but like, oh, like it blends in. God, <laughs> so fucking annoying. Mom, shh. <laughs> Anyways, so Big, Big J got dosed. He got drugged. Big J got drugged. Ari didn't get drugged, but thought he got drugged, so he was placeboing. He was, yeah, no, Ari was pretending. So Ari, Ari figured out that he was about to be drugged and switched his drink with Big J. Genius. Genius, but like also... <sighs> Did Big J know. not have a good time? Is this what I'm feeling? I'm feeling like the vibe was not funny. Well, he's never done acid before. I feel like he was oh. nervous. I, I mean, I, I honestly think if you can have threesomes, you can handle acid. I don't know what else to say. I can't decide how I'd feel about being dosed. Like, I've done a ton of acid, but every time I've done acid, I've known I was doing it. Like, if I just started to fall into the world of acid without knowing that I've taken it, I'd panic to like the world's end that I'm experiencing flashbacks and now I'm just going to be on acid sometimes. Here's what I have to say about that. Anytime you are on a podcast with Ari Shafir, you should assume that there's like a 70 to 85% chance that you're going to be doing a drug unknowingly. Unknowingly? Yes. I even, I even there have been times where there have been uh, like we've been back when me and Lewis were dating, we've been at dinner or having a meal with Ari and I've needed to go to the bathroom and I've literally brought my plate with me. Cause I'm like, I don't want him to be like, try and be like, I drugged your girl, Lewis. Ah! <laughs> you know, like I just don't leave anything. I think it's your, honestly, I hate to blame the victim here, but maybe big J should have covered his shoulders. I don't know what to tell you. You know what? I think 80 to 85% is high. I think that there's like a 10 to 15% chance that Ari will drug you if you're on a show together, but it goes up that's to 80 someone, or 85. That's said by someone that would get drugged by Ari Shafir. It, I think it goes up to 80 or 85 if you include the possibility of you consuming some of his bodily fluids without realizing it. Like True. cum or spit or urine or something. Right, like that is, right. That, that's a majorly high percentage. Right. Yeah. So like beware i guess mm -hmm. um but yeah it was wild it was a whole thing wow that's nuts so did jay start tripping on the show jay was holding it together extremely well i was trying to look for signs of somebody who's tripping and it he, he didn't he, he didn't show it uh negatively at all what about after he left after oh god i'd love to be Which a fly on that wall I get it. It's like somebody puts you on drugs without you knowing about it whatsoever. You go home to ride it out. Like, yeah, I think I understand that. Yeah, you do. I mean, I don't know. Maybe home might be the worst place. I might be like, you know what? We have to stay out with our friends and I have to laugh. Or I don't Just know. Depends. The people who've come from a broken home feel that way. And then people, other people feel another way. <laughs> That's Just true. Depends That's how true. Home is for you. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I guess um, it is. It depends on what home is. 
That's right. This I forgot this happened to Bobby. I was with him once. Uh, this was at Ralph's apartment a couple of years ago on one of those crazy nights where it was they were recording the SCR show and porn stars were there and everything and everyone's hanging out and partying after the recording. And um, but drugs were just like kind of around that night, but like it, it, there was just like everything. There was like a couple psychedelics. There was weed. Everything was just there. So one of the porn stars offered Bobby some edibles mm -hmm. and he took like they were the coming entire... from her nipples <laughs> he, he took the entirety of what she handed him and like ate it and he was like that was pretty good like what are, what was that and she was like oh just like mushrooms like mushroom truffles and Bobby like 100% had signed up for an, a weed edible high right and then and, he took uh, a lot of shrooms he took a whole bunch I think it was like a full eighth in there and yeah, he jumped in the car and went directly home. And I remember asking like how things went. And he was like, man, as soon as I like put the car in park in my driveway, everything just started like whooshing around me. Like the adrenaline. He drove kept... home. He, he raced home to beat. Wait, he, was like, I there that night? You might have been. He raced against the clock. Was that Shannon's home... birthday? Mm. I don't, I think it was a different night. It was a oh. similar night to that though. Like a, a similar hang and vibe, but a little different. I kind of remember hearing Bobby be like, I have to make it home in 30 minutes. Yeah. Like he like was racing against the clock to get home before the mushrooms kicked in, which I think is just, it's such a risk. Like what if you like, what if you hit traffic like that one night where they're doing road work on the highway and you're just behind a row of lights for an hour, like. Definitely. To come up. The f one of the, f the first time, actually the first time I did mushrooms, um, I was with my old roommate and I went with a guy I was dating and then her boyfriend and the two guys, they took them and they're like, oh, it takes, uh, you know, 30 to 45 minutes to kick in. We're just going to drive. I'm going to take them during the drive. And then when we get close and then the drive was longer than we thought. And we were going up this huge hill for this hike and it had already kicked in for me. And I remember the guys being like, they were like racing time because we were like, we're on this huge hill. The guys were like, I'm starting to feel weird. We got to park soon. I was like, we got to park soon because it was already like, you know, those curves where you're like, you know, you ever see a road where you're like, how is it possible that this is legal? Yes, I've For been humans. on one of those. In, there's a road, I feel like it's in Colorado, that takes you to a, the top of a mountain where I'm like, they shouldn't just let any car on this road. I feel like 40% of cars on the road can't make it up this fucking mountain and they shouldn't be allowed to try. No, I mean, it's the things that I've seen, the roads that I've seen where I'm like, this is... I mean, I'm one text away from everything being gone. This hardly constitutes as a road at this point. I'm I off track. regularly drive off a road. Yeah, like you're like it's just off trail at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ever on the highway and you hit those things? You're like, Rrr. I do that all the time. That's all I do. Oh, you hit the rumble strips a lot. Yes, you know they. I kind of like it. It's like you not know they for have anything, singing but... ones. I've seen the singing ones on TikTok. They seem really fun. Me and my mom went over one and I thought I was tripping. I was like, did I, that just sing to us? And she was like, no, I don't think they do that. And I Googled it. They do. And and the problem with that is that like, wh why are you making the rumble strips fun? Like, you're going to make me want to finish the song on the rumble strip, you know? I th that's, that's true. And I did have to go through. I would think the one we got was Jingle Bells, which was weird. I was like, would you choose a holiday theme for year round? But... It was Jingle Bells. Mom, do you remember when we, we were driving the on the highway and we heard those things and it sang that song? Yeah. Jingle Bells is not the song to just put in the middle of a street that's not in the North Pole. Right. I hate an all year I, round Christmas person. I feel like, um, I know this is going to sound weird, but my one of my like votes for a choice uh, for a rumble strip song, I think like Viva La Vida by Coldplay. It's just nice and recognizable. Ting, 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 ting. I've literally da -da. never heard that Coldplay song. And it's so it, funny that you're like, it's nice and recognizable. And I, I mean, like it, you couldn't get away from it when it was like on the radio. You definitely know it. You just aren't thinking uh, I'm not. I'm not a professional musician to sing it for oh, you. Okay. Hold on. I could get my kazoo and play it for you. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold on on that. <laughs> Leave the kazoo where it is, sister. My, my <laughs> kazoo and I have rediscovered one another and 
boy, is it love again. <laughs> oh my God, a kazoo. Uh, I swear to God, sometimes I come home in the middle of the night and I like spot my kazoo on my, if you guys don't know what my kazoo looks like, it's not like a fucking pussy ass, like plastic kazoo. Your kazoo like, is I, hairy. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> um, I got this fucking Tell us about your kazoo. kazoo. What's a, what's your, describe your kazoo. Bro, my kazoo is like slim. It's slender. Um, it's metal got, tasting. Like, yes, <laughs> metal tasting. It's made of metal. Um, it's got like embellishments in gold and and red, and it only costs three dollars, which is like mwah, as much as a kazoo should ever cost. <laughs> That's true. I, yeah. I come home at night at like whatever time it is, like three in the morning. And I spot my kazoo on my bedside table where it stays, mm-hmm. and I just can't help. Like I can't help it. It you must. Have to touch. Blow. You have to put your own mouth on your kazoo. I must touch my lips to this kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I swear to God, I'm like I have the thought. My parents are literally sleeping in the room below me, and I quietly kazoo for a minute just to get it out of my system. And every time, I'm like. Imagine, imagine the time that I can't, I'm not quiet enough, and my parents wake up at three in the morning to be kazooing alone. I would like, kick you out for that. That's when I get kicked out. Yeah, like that's what I would get kicked out of the house for. That's grounds for kicking out. That'd be like that's obnoxious. She's got to go. Like, it's like the one thing I'm not allowed to do here is kazoo in the middle of the night, but I like breaking the rules. <laughs> oh fuck! Um, damn, you on your kazoo game. Yeah. Do you still? How, play how did we start talking about the kazoo? I already don't remember. Um, what, oh, I was gonna the rumble strips. We were talking about singing rumble strips. Oh, the Can rumble you, strips and what would good be songs? But but you know what they're for? They're for people that fall asleep. Right, but like, so it can't be like a lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> Nighty night and sleep tight. <laughs> That's the one. Don't sleep on <laughs> Those would be the funny. Yeah, Coldplay would not wake you up. I'd need like Cardi B WAP. <laughs> but it would just be the beat. It's not like the want, rumble strip yeah. sings to you. That's some wet ass pussy. It's like burp, 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 burp. I'd be like, yeah. I feel I'd like, be like I recognize I'd be like this. I'd be like song. this. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Um, um yeah, I do. I like that. And then also, like, in a situation like that, like, it's not like you hit the rumble strip at the top of the song. You hit the rumble strip wherever it is. So you could just get, like, random fucking dirty points in the song, like, slide right. over. That's true. But- I want to get, and then you go back out and <laughs> keep driving. <laughs> yeah, you could fucking swerve to censor the song. Yeah, if your kids are in the car. Can oh, we see- or if you're white and you don't want to even hear the N-word. In oh, I like town? that. I like Have that. Have you seen the girl on her violin that does WAP? No. Because a violin girl did WAP recently who was like no, amazing. No, this violin girl did a song. She was like this Asian girl and she did a rap song. And you could literally in the music hear the N-word. And someone said, did she just play the N-word? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you could barely, very clearly hear it's the word. I would be lying if I said that I didn't have to like reteach myself a lot of the rap songs that I know as a kid, like that I knew from when I was a kid without the N word. So it's like you, you're used to hearing the song as it is. And then like sometimes if lyrics are fast, you're trying to like keep up with it. It's actually not the easiest thing in the world to skip the N word when you're trying to stay with the music. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's I'm in not. training is what I'm saying to, to, be, oh, to skip the Oh, it's not the easiest? No, it's not that easy. It's, oh, it's like, so easy. To skip no, the N word? I guess you're right. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you know the song really well and you're like vibing with the music, like sometimes musically – you're just in tune with what the music pausing, is saying. And it's pausing like, fucks you up to start again is what you're saying. Yeah, no, I, and it's also like a more active experience. Like if you know the song really well, you could just kind of lay back and like sing along to it. But you but don't like if, the thing that TikTokers do now where they go? I like, I prefer this. Like, I like this. I got to cover the, the whole mouth for it. Why? I think I like this, 
this is safer because if you if you needed to mouth it just to keep up with the music, you're not being offensive. Nobody could see you mouth it to keep up with the music. Did you see what Francis said? If someone, if someone, <laughs> he said, like, if someone printed out little Dirk lyrics and wanted you to rap them, exactly. This is great opportunity. Uh, I was great just thinking that about that today. When the episode where Kim and I got laced, um, Kim started off the episode by printing out a full fucking page of Lil Dirk lyrics and having us try to rap them along with a song that we've never heard before and replace the N word with Boomer. And it was one of the big, my, it was like a brain exercise. It was like, you know, <laughs> it was my, you know, it was an improv. They do it at the improv places now. <laughs> it was like increase your IQ by playing this fun game. Like it was so hard. <laughs> I got to tell you, if you haven't seen that episode, you got it. You, I think you can only get it on Gas Digital right now, right? Yeah, but it's it's honestly worth it. Go to gasdigitalnetwork.com. Use promo code TOPICS, T-O-P-I-X. It is so raw. We are so fully on when drugs. When I'm telling you, we were laced. We were, on this episode. Like, we smoked a joint and there were other drugs in the joint. And when I tell you I look like a meth head in the episode, it is just worth it. Just to, I would get a whole gas digital subscription to watch that episode. It's crazy. I look like I've been doing crack for five years in that episode. Yes. It, like it. That, and Alex it was mean to me. Once. I was like really sad and scared and Alex like bullied me. I, just, I was like, Kim, you're being a little bitch. What, you never do drugs before? What, you never been uncomfortable? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I kind of feel like my heart's going to stop. You're like, it was just a little pot. <laughs> Come to find out it was Coke in a pot bag that we just smoked in a joint. I don't even do Coke. Now I smoked it. I think that's it was, crack. It was a lot. It was. I think that's smoking crack. When you smoke Coke, it becomes crack. Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't do crack, but like it sounds. What is that sounds crack? Like... How do we make crack? You make crack from Coke, I think. What you got a bag it, of coke? You got some potential crack, baby. How to make crack? Oh, Frank just knows offhand. <laughs> <laughs> how? He said, no, he said very vaguely, cocaine plus baking soda, comma, there's a process. Okay, Francis, you know Frank, exactly how to make crack. Frank, but what, what when you smoke coke, what's that called? I don't think that works. I feel like I've had a conversation recently with somebody saying that the um, the temperature that Coke needs to be heated to in order for it to like smoke properly or like vaporize properly is fire doesn't do that. Then what was in that joint? Probably PCP. What's PCP? I don't. I don't know. I feel like in my world, PCP just goes into like a category of like really bad drugs that if somebody offers you at a party, no matter how much of a drug person you are, you should be like, no, I'll do something else. Why were you so calm on it? I actually, I was just thinking it's something that I'm, I should be very proud of. Like if you watch that episode, you'll see that I'm just a fucking king and I, I could handle that's why that's probably I'm why like I'm this on the episode. <laughs> It's probably why I can handle doing so much acid because it's like if, if I'm not feeling well on drugs, I'm pretty okay with like managing it. No, 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 no. I did not have a good time. I think I cried. I was more upset that you were upset than I was that, that I got laced. I well, because like, I thought it was I got- fentanyl. No, I think we would have known if it was fentanyl. I yeah, because we would have been, been dead. And first of all, we wouldn't have known because nobody seemed to notice that we were laced until I said something. I was like, That's hey, true. you guys feel really weird. I feel really weird. And everyone's, and then suddenly Bobby or er, Frank gets on the bike and he goes, yeah, I feel the highest I've ever been. No, but before, before we went into the studio, I said to, uh, to Frank and Bobby, I was like, you know, I know this is weird because we didn't smoke that much, but I actually feel higher than I've ever been, like like the highs I used to get in high school when I smoked for the first time. I did say that. Yeah. So I, I was like ignoring the fact that something could have been wrong, but I definitely noticed that something was different. It was a bad time. It was a scary uh, time. It's literally what your mother warns you about when she's like, the weed has drug other drugs in it. And you're like, no, that's not a real thing. And then- I love how this is all coming from the person who just called Big J a pussy for not wanting to be on acid randomly. 
I think there's a difference between acid and a PCP, though. No, there if, is. If, Can I we learn out that, if I found out that there was acid in my thing, I would be upset, but I wouldn't be as scared. I, not knowing what it was really fucked me up. That's true. But I think if it had been fentanyl, we would have before dying. Like if, if we were going to die, then we would have died. But if we weren't going to die, we would have felt like extremely good, like inexplicably good. Like I think we weren't feeling good enough for it to be fentanyl. I sprinted in the studio and made everyone print out rap lyrics and we were going to do a, a rap off. And then I changed the lyrics from the N word to boomer. And I was so hype on it. I felt so good. I've you wouldn't never... let us listen to the song so that we could hear what the beat was like before we tried to rap along with it. You were like, being we're going wrong. Cool. You guys have the You're talent be- for this. Um, can we like, but can you guys like look up a little bit, like look up PCP? Like what is PCP? I don't know. I, f- I do feel like what you did, like printing out those lyrics and making, um, us read that, that feels like PCP energy. <laughs> it, whatever. Like, I felt like a meth head. Yeah. It doesn't feel like, um, like opiate energy. Right. All right. PCP is a mind altering drug that may lead to hallucinations it's considered a dissociative drug leading to a distortion of sights, color, sounds, self, and one's environment. It was developed in the 1950s as an intravenous anesthetic, but due to the serious neurotoxic side effects, its development for human medical use was discontinued. See, I'm like, I'm not impressed. Like, can we get a firsthand account of what it's like to be on PCP? It's like half the fun drugs just came from somebody trying to treat medical conditions. Right. Yeah, I, do, I, I heard those symptoms didn't seem familiar to me, really. No, I mean, that sounds like, like, it sounded more like ketamine or something like that. Maybe look up ketamine. It might have been ketamine. I don't think you smoke what, ketamine, though. What? Smoking which white powder makes you feel like you're on the tip of a rocket while it's shooting into outer space? That's exactly how I felt. Okay. I think that's cocaine. Kim did cry. We walked around the... It, may, it might have been meth, yeah. That could have been meth. Could have been meth. Could have been angel dust, baby. <laughs> Can we look up angel dust? I think that's meth. I think that's like a... I think that's like um. Like a when you way start, to say meth. Angel, angel dust is also PCP. It's PCP. Okay. Um, I think that when you start doing PCP and start to like realize what garbage you are, you have to start to refer to it as like something prettier. You're like, oh, it's right. just some angel dust. For just my- dust from an angel. Yeah. I mean, these, these are all things that I'm not interested in. I've done ketamine before once and I didn't like it. It was similar in my world to being drunk, which I don't like. Mm. Listen to the disrespect. Is she on the phone? On speaker with the door open. I just watched you be furious at your mom. And like, I, the look in your eye. <sighs> well, just the thought of her knowing I'm doing a podcast. I told her I had to do a podcast. She wanted to hang out today. She asked me, I'm sorry to interrupt our PCP talk, but she asked me if I wanted to hang out today. I said, sure. I have to do two podcasts, one at two, one at four. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm at home. Then we can hang out. She's like, no, come to my apartment. Do it. We'll, we'll I'll be quiet. The nerve of her to one, the last podcast I did, she sat right next to me in a bathing suit top. And I had to literally go like this. Kim in the middle like of- this on Larry Bay's show. <laughs> <laughs> I had to slide my mom out of view and pretend she didn't sit there. And then she just well, awkwardly sat there until she moved. Like I heard her feelings. <laughs> and, then, and then now she gets a phone call. She answers it on speaker. You can hear her, right? I can hear it. I think I could also hear the other person. It's crazy. Because she's talking on speaker. Like, you know just what? like an annoying Puerto Rican. I hope it's like an annoying, like, it's like an embarrassing personal call and somebody goes through this episode to bump it up and find out all her personal information. Right, they translate it and shit and suddenly they own her identity. Yeah, they, they start writing letters to her. We like, um, didn't know Kim's mom had herpes, but she said it on a phone call. <laughs> Oh, fuck. The other day, yesterday morning, oh, yesterday morning, I got fresh with Bobby Hutch. I yelled at him. It was You yelled at Bobby? I could never. It hurts my feelings to think of it, but I have to tell you. So 
we um so bobby and i slept at frank eric and harrington's apartment we slept at the the gas hype house right um where like there's limited very limited space there's very limited seating there's a lot of like the floor is open to whoever wants to sit down um <laughs> and so well, first the, quickly francis said he was also assaulted but he's been you've been forgiven i was getting to that frank oh, but I still okay 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 assaulted frank as well um so so yeah f- uh, there's an air mattress. So Bobby slept on the air mattress in uh, Eric's room, which is the room that has like the most space to put an air mattress. And so I'm torn between Frank's room and Harrington's room. Now Frank's room is usually the obvious choice because if you just step into either of their rooms, it's like, it's literally like Harrington's room is Frank's room after like a murder happened in it like a really violent murder where like the victim has like evidence under their fingernails like right you know yeah um yeah it's it's dr jekyll and mr hyde exactly it's really bad um but we were going to bed at like 7 30 in the morning and frank had an 11 a.m show the next morning so he was like he had like two hours to like sleep and he had to like get up and be ready so i was like fuck it i'm sleeping in harrington's room harrington doesn't have shit to do tomorrow He'll wake up at like noon. It's going to be great. I'm going to wake up at noon. I get my day started. Go to Legion of Skanks. It's going to be perfect. I made this plan clear to everybody. When I tell you, I walked around the night before. I was like, listen, everybody, I'm sleeping in Harrington's room. We're going to sleep till noon. I can't wait. You fuck faces have fun being up early. Right. right? Now, the experience of sleeping in Harrington's room, a whole other thing. It's like, Frank's room is like the air conditioner is like almost too cold. It's like you got to fucking, you got to bring the blanket even closer. You're all cuddly, a happy little nose is cold. Everything's right. quiet. It's beautiful. Harrington put on a cartoon <laughs> <laughs> that I, I believe that he thought I was going to love it. Like he was trying to like show me a fun cartoon, but like I just, I couldn't get into it. And the way that like he just like passed out with like the Xbox controller under him. And I had to just listen to this cartoon all uh, night. <laughs> like uh. in, it's like hot. It was like hot in the room. So I'm like taking a hit to sleep in this room so that I could sleep till noon. It's a thing. It's a thing. And at like 10 a.m. sharp, like a solid two and a half a- hours after I've gone to bed, just three heavy knocks on the door like it's the like it's the police it's the bobby me, hutch police woke me completely up <laughs> okay. and it took me i was disoriented entirely so it took me maybe like a solid five minutes to recognize that like that was the knock that woke me up for the day and now i actually need to get out of bed because i can't fall back asleep now this is not to mention the fact that i had done drugs the night before to help me stay up so like I was like, you know, when you wake up after like a night of drugs and you're like, oh, like I should be more tired, but I'm just awake from like still being high. It's when your body's tired, but your mind's awake. Yeah. So I stand up and I get to the door and nobody's there because it's been five minutes. But in my mind, I'm like, well, somebody just knocked on the door and now nobody's standing here. Like I was just so ready to be a bitch (laughs) to everybody in the apartment. (laughs) Okay. I was already angry that whoever knocked didn't stand there for five minutes waiting for the answer. <laughs> right. And I, I tried to play it cool. Like I like, I like get out of the room. I'm like, yeah, don't yell at anybody. That's not a good look. But then I kind of like come back in the room expecting Harrington to empathize because he's also been woken up. So I'm like venting at it to Harrington. I'm like, and we got woken up. And it's like, I thought I said that I wanted to sleep till noon. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> I'm being like really dramatic (laughs) and at this point I still don't know who knocked and I almost didn't want to know who knocked because I just wanted to yell at the knocker without knowing for sure who it was Mm -hmm. so I didn't have to feel bad about it but man like I made a scene like I made a scene in the hallway I was like and whoever woke me up like thanks a lot good on you I guess I'm just up today it's fucking (laughs) fine (laughs) and and where did Bobby come in Bobby was like getting his stuff together. He was like in Eric's room. And I think he had like, I think he'd like vaguely heard me complaining for like 10 minutes and just wasn't really like listening to the context. 
and I could like register this moment on his face where he was like, oh no, she's yelling because somebody knocked and it was me. And he was like, oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. I th- we thought we heard your voice. It was the fucking cartoon still. Oh it was still no, playing. the cartoon that you hate. Cartoon that I hated was still playing and they so mistook it's all it Harrington's fault. <laughs> All was, well, you see, I almost blamed it on Frank because then Frank came clean. He said that he was the person who said, I think I hear Alex's voice. I think they're awake. So oh, then shit. I was all ready. I was ready to fucking punch Frank for it. <laughs> I was mad at everybody. Oh, wow. I was mad at everybody. And then the I yelled drama at Frank. The drama at the hype house. I yelled at Frank at Legion of Skanks last night because I was just still cranky. It was just a fucking cranky day. And uh, now I feel terrible about all of it because you both are my friends and your blessings, both of you. Oh, my God. It's Bobby, so awkward knock- to fight with your friends. Bobby, knock on my door whenever you want. I was just kidding. Was that you and Bobby's first fight? It wasn't a fight. It was just – I just usually – like, if I'm, like – it's just difficult for me to ever express being upset about anything because I'm usually not. And so mm-hmm. even when it's, like, the smallest thing – just being like in that state of mind and upset about it. I just needed to like, be like, Ugh, right. I, I feel hate that. you, Bobby Especially Hodge. getting woken up. That's like a different rage. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You know what? Myself in the morning. Me off that my mom did. What? My mom did this thing. Okay. So like I told you, she was like, hang out with me tomorrow. And I was like, cool. And then I text or I talked to her the night before I said, Hey, um, uh, I'll, I'll go to your place tomorrow. I'll meet you at 10 a.m. Very clearly, the night before, I said, I'll meet you at 10 a.m. Talk to you tomorrow. Love you. Goodbye. 8, 11 a.m., I get a phone call reminding me. And I was like, bitch, I said 10 a.m., which means I'm getting there at 10.15, which means I was going to wake up at 9.45. Mm-mm. Now, my mom knows not to even ever attempt to pull that shit because of the way that I reacted the last time that happened. <laughs> oh, I wish I could threaten my mom away from it. My mom's like an abused animal. But like the more I hit her, the more she like clings to me. It's sick. If I'm nice to her, she doesn't talk to me for a week. Oh God, that explains a lot. I feel <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it's like also there's a thing about like the uh, my parents are over this, but back in the day, they just thought that since they were awake in the house, like I should be awake. That's oh, something so about weird. parents. It's like if you're just waking your kids up for them to be awake, you you have no respect and you don't like your own life. You need your kids to fucking distract you. Let them sleep. You should be happy that they're sleeping and that they're not in your face. Like my what the mom fuck's happening? hates when we're sleeping. She hates it. And, when will, the, and then when we wake up, we're just in the way and making things a mess. All she does is complain that we're like in the way and making things dirty. And it's like, we well, try to stay away. I hope that when I have like teenagers sleeping at 1 p.m., I'm going to be like using the time to like get high on the porch and hang out by myself and hoping they don't wake up soon so I could read a book. Like I'm specifically waiting for me to have my first baby for it to turn like six to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be like, in, I don't know, honey. Dude, once you start kindergarten, you got to start sleeping in. Cause mommy needs TikTok and a joint in the morning. You can sleep in exactly. on the weekend. Exactly, exactly. I don't know what else to say. Oh, How do you I just thought of the fact that parents have to get their children ready for school, no matter what time they have to go to work. Like, oh. I don't want to get up at seven to dress a child if I don't have to go to work till six p.m. I'm literally too distracted by my mother's loud conversation to hear you. I'm sorry. I just thought of like a really like fucked up fact of, of parenting that I never even thought about. Being disrespected while you're trying to live your dream? No, having to get up in the morning. Well, yes, but also having to get up in the morning and dress your child from school on, for school on days that you don't have to go to work. That's disgusting. That's awful. Yo, shout well, out You only have to do that. I'm telling you, the key is, this is the key. You have to raise a really independent child. Like by the time they're like five, they should be allowed to dress themselves, put their shoes on. They should be mostly getting ready by themselves because I think there were coal. And my thing was like, they're coal miners that were five. So you could put a shirt on and make yourself some cereal. So you're saying like, if you walk like the tightrope, the fine line of neglect, your kid will be 
fine. Independent enough. I don't think, I don't think making a kid put on his own shirt and pants in the morning and pour cereal and milk is neglect. No, I think they actually love that. I think that's very good for kids. Right. It's like, and it's like you get ready or like even the night before you go, here's three outfits. You get to pick one of these in the morning. Everything's laid out. The shit's laid out. I already made this shit, put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Wake me up if you're dying. That's going to be me as a parent. I don't know what else to tell you. No, I would definitely let my kids fully pick out their outfits and I would be really excited when they're like mismatched and going to school all confident with like mismatched clothes on just feeling really cool because they picked it out. It's so cute. That's so cute. What else do you need Uh, in a kid? Be a shining self sister. Be a shining weirdo self. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. Anytime my kids are like, if my kids are fucking weird, I'm going to be so proud of it. I'm going to be so proud of any weird moment. I'm like, yeah, what what were you like as a kid in school? And I think that you I think that you would never be able to guess how I was. Were you quiet? Not at all. No, I was over the top like people. I was I was so over the top that I pushed a lot of people away because of it. Like I I. I was too excited to talk to people and like I had too much to say and they were like. You were extra. Yeah, I told you like uh, specifically in terms of like crushes, like when I was young, I'll never experience love the way I experienced my childhood crushes. Like I'll never care about anything in my life the way I cared about a few particular boys when I was little. There's truly no deeper love. And yeah, and the way that like I needed everybody to know how I felt, I couldn't hold it inside. I was not ashamed of it. I was like, I am in love with Danny Finn. And if (laughs) I catch any of you other girls looking in his direction, I will cry. I will. Yeah. And my back. Now Kim is pretending to freeze. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> but yeah, I was I was a problem. I needed everybody to know that I love. Alex, why are you still talking? No one can hear you. <laughs> no one knows a thing you're saying. You're in a different dimension than us. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Ken. I'm just going to keep doing the podcast. I don't know what else to say. She could tell, keep telling this Danny Finn story for as long as she wants, but there ain't no service here. There she is. Are you frozen? Are you pretending to be frozen like me? I'm not frozen. <laughs> I see you frozen, though. You actually look frozen. Your, your mouth is in a position where it can't. There we are. No? Just kidding. <laughs> well, you're frozen on my end, though. I can't tell. No, am I frozen now or is this surreal? Am I frozen now? Oh, boy, please stop doing that. <laughs> Does it look real? Look, and then Alex freezes. I'm not frozen. <laughs> oh, shit. That was fucking good. That's good, right? Bitch, that was fucking good. I got her. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think she's frozen. I don't think this bitch is frozen. No, she knows how to freeze in a hot position, like when she's doing it on purpose, and she looks too cute right now to really be frozen. Anyways. <laughs> um, wait, but uh, how are we cutting this in? That's definitely an edit, right? I don't know what's happening. To freeze and not to freeze. Um, but yeah, I was, anyway, I was too much as a kid. I think if I have to take a guess, I'm assuming you were a shy and quiet child. No, I was, yeah, well, yeah, I was actually, like, pretty annoying. You were, like, annoying? not, I was annoying, like, from, probably from, like, kindergarten into, like, fourth grade, I was, like, a perfectionist. Like, I wanted, like, to get the best grades. I wanted to, like, be the, like, cleanest, cutest, like, put-together girl. I wanted all my stuff organized. I think in, like, fourth grade, I got an award for, like, I checked out the most books in a library, and I read the most books out of anyone in our school for the entire year. That's really cute. Oh, like, well, all I wanted to do is, like, be like Matilda and read and be really smart. And then Why am I, if- like, retroactively really proud of you for getting that award? I know, and you know what? It's really good. Nobody really cared enough over here. No. My mom, my mom was like, cool. And I was like... <laughs> That should still be on the fridge it's today. The whole school. It should still be on the fridge today. Like it should my, be. 
She's throwing be- away everything. I don't have one. I don't have one thing. There's something on my fridge that features. My, it's like a f- picture that I made of, of my mom. That's like the face is like a heart shape. And then I used sequins for eyes and a mouth. I glued sequins to it. And then I used yarn for hair. It's just spaghetti hanging down. And it's still on the fucking fridge. I'm so jealous. We have nothing left. My mom's thrown everything out. Mom, I'm do really we have anything from my childhood? Do we have anything? Do we have any? The, you know when you're a kid and you write books and stories or you draw a picture? A, a, first, a first hair? Yes. Where? She has my teeth. Isn't that a disgusting thing to keep? Every parent has their kids' teeth. My mom that has my so teeth, too. That is so fucking gross. Why? What a weird they, thing to keep. They can't get rid of them. They're like, oh, like, I made this thing by fucking look, somebody. Look at, it. it's, look at it. It's her first pube from when she turned 13. This I is pl- her first pubic hair. I plucked it myself <laughs> when I was changing her. <laughs> She was only 36,000 months old this day. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but no, I could I could see that for you. So you were like a little, you were trying to be um, like, not like teacher's pet, but you were just trying to be like the perfect girl, like the, the like is doing everything right, girl. Right, yeah. And then I moved schools. And I remember I was like very, no, this was probably... It's probably in fourth grade. I've moved schools and I remember going up to the girl that became my best friend, like f- like she's still my best friend now. And I think we were eight or nine years old and I went up to her in the first day of school. And this is exactly my personality from then on. It was so annoying. I went up to her and I was like, hey, what's up? Are you a tomboy or a girly girl? Because I'm a tomboy. And that's how I introduced myself. <laughs> I like that. You were just laying it out on the table. You were like, listen. I'm, I'm this. I'm and this. I don't know if you want to vibe with this. Like, I don't know what type you are, but like, I'm accepting both, but I'm this type. I like I, that. I think I was trying to come out as a lesbian. <laughs> Do you remember back when like handwriting was important and like the better your handwriting was, like the cooler you were? And if you were a girl with bad handwriting, it was like, ew, she like doesn't even have good handwriting. I literally still feel that way. And like, I get jealous of like, I'll never forget this girl in elementary school, Caitlin Cardi. Her handwriting was like a font, bro. Like, it was, she was just like typing onto paper. It was beautiful. It was very bubbly and pretty. And I'm still jealous to this day. I hated those perfect handwriting bitches. And you know, they would, you know, they would dot their eyes as circles instead of dots. So that's how Caitlin did it exactly that way. Oh, and would she curl her letters? Mm-hmm. They were beautiful. Bitch. They looked bitch. Every oh. fucking page in her notes looked immaculate. And it was like, bitch, do you get good grades or is this just aesthetic? Like, I'll give you an annoying one I did with the letters. Okay. I did my A's how they're like lowercase on a keyboard. Me too. I picked that up in the fourth grade. And now I switch between without realizing. Me too. too. Um, If I'm trying to feel like a hot chick, I will do it again. Yeah. And I remember seeing the girl that was like pretty in my class do it like that. And I switched my A's to that because she was pretty and she did her A's like that. God damn it. Me too. I'm going to do my A's like that. Me too. The pretty girl in class. I saw it and I was like, that's the way I do my A's from from now on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember bubble letters? Yes, I was I was pretty okay at bubble letters. I was not. I tried and they were never cute and I still try and they're never cute. There's there's like a trick. You got to measure it out. You got to draw yourself like some kind of um, like shape to contain everything into because otherwise it's hard to get all the letters the same size. Yeah, that's true. It's also interesting how like bubble letters are like it's something that like when you're in third to fifth grade it's like very important and every little girl needs to know how to make them it's a matter of popularity and things and then when you get older it only exists in the world of graffiti where it's just like really bad it's just so different it's just those are the two groups of people who love bubble letters it's it's (laughs) seven-year-old girls and gangsters yeah (laughs) like literally a seven-year-old girl could probably sit down with a gangster and fucking show her show him her bubble letters and he'd be like man that's actually pretty good like i, I know my guy <laughs> niche from down in queens he'd be popping shit on walls that look just like that right she, he's like this is good what does that say i love sos 
how'd you develop your your exes like that? Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else was huge? Um, the did you used to take the crayon boxes, the plastic crayon boxes? Did you used to color the tops of them with markers? You know, when it said space maker on the top. And I would color it in with a marker. You could color it like, let's say I took rainbow and I colored the top of the plastic carton and then you would fill it with glue. It was like the space of a rectangle. And then you would let it dry and peel it off and it would be like tie dye bookmarks. No, but Bobby, I, just, I can saw- you, Bobby, can you Google space maker glue bookmarks? I, I, there, it has to come up. It has- I never did that. But I saw somebody on TikTok do it recently. Really? And the comments were all like, oh my gosh, you just unlocked a memory. Like I used to do this all the time. I never did that though. That sounds fun. Did you little- do your hand? We used to glue our hands and then peel it off. I mean, every if you did not develop an addiction to peeling the fucking Elmer's glue off your hands, then Look you at probably the tie-dye don't ones. Drunk today. The top one. They're so cool. Oh, that's fun. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. I would have lost my entire day doing that in yes, class. Yes, I would do it all the time. This and then just, you'd, and you'd put it in your, you'd do it secretly and you'd put it in your desk and let it dry overnight. Are so you, you telling me all it takes is some markers and some Elmers to make one of these beauties? Yes. We're doing it when you come. Oh, we're absolutely doing that. Can you get one of those boxes? You mean a little caboodle? I can. Yes, two of them. Two um, caboods. Yeah, and then what? Oh, there were so many fucking weird little phases. And I feel like they're gen- like they're not they're pretty universal. Like it's not quite so generational. Like I feel like even like in twenty years, like even like fifty years ago, like girls were having fights over who has the best handwriting. You know, right? Like I like the timelessness of it, or the less plague. Do you remember um like sex bracelets in like the early two thousands? Yeah, the, the colors you wore depending on what you did. Yeah. So, like, when those were popular, I was at an age where, like, it was just so wildly inappropriate for anybody at my age to be wearing them at all. Mm-hmm. Same. But everybody had them and, like, didn't quite fully understand what they were supposed to mean. But, like, it was just a trend at that point. You'd, and you'd be like, oh, did you see Alicia? She's wearing a black one. She's not a virgin anymore. Like we're like 13 or like a guy would give a girl a black one and everybody would be like, Ooh. yeah. And then um, if you took them off and then like interlaced them together and put them back on, it meant 69. Yes. I yes, remember that 69 one in particular. already, which is so intense for a middle schooler to be doing. Every- <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, if your middle schooler is 69 and you have failed as a parent. Honestly, I would I would rather my middle schooler take it in the butt for Jesus than 69. Me too. Me too. Absolutely. 100%. Um, yeah, like 69ing in general is like, it's just a little much. It's so, it's so much. I can't focus. It's like, it's too much. I don't enjoy it. I don't like I it. I couldn't I'll imagine. Say- I couldn't focus in middle school. I couldn't imagine in middle school. You heard it here and now. I don't <laughs> like 69ing. Um, uh, oh shit looks like we have the urban list of what the colors mean let's check it out yes let let's see this okay yellow is hugging so that's okay like i know i had that then okay purple, purple is a- we jumped from yellow which is hugging to purple which <laughs> is anal sex they should they should have ordered this list differently purple is a good color for anal sex though i don't know why but it is like it just is. Like, that's the color of anal Red sex. is sex. Or okay. oral. Or a lap dance, which is a bunch of completely different things. Yeah, I mean, a lap dance and sex shouldn't share the same color. Oh, red also means you don't use condoms. Blue, okay. blowjob, obviously. But they both start with B. Black, sexual intercourse. Damn. With condom. Okay. So black is actually better than red somehow. Okay, red was with no condom. I red is raw. That. I get it. Orange, orange, kissing, bare breast. I like orange. I'm kind of sexual. I'll take a yellow and an orange right now. Yeah. Green, cunnilingus, or outdoor sex. Wow. Clear, whatever you want. 
white flashing or gay kiss or French kiss. I actually remember the white being gay. <laughs> I don't know why. Glow in the dark with sex toys. Red and black, 69. Pink, licking butt. <laughs> Silver fisting. Ew. Gold glitter makeout. Brown toss my salad. Wow. Um yeah, no, I didn't I didn't know the the whole fucking key when I was a kid. I didn't know what all of them meant, thankfully. That was sick as fuck. I'm glad I'm glad we're past that phase. Yeah. Um, I couldn't I couldn't keep up with it. I was ashamed of my just dumb yellows. I wonder if the All company I had was yellow and white, it's like a dumb gay. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking dumb gay. <laughs> um, I wonder if the company who made those bracelets put them out as sex bracelets or just put out bracelets and like eventually was like, well, we're the sex company now, I guess. Like I think they put out bracelets and then we we as children made them what we wanted them to be. I kind of love that. I love forcing that company into <laughs> Into that into position. Being a sexual, what if it was a Christian company? They're like, we just wanted to make a nice godly bracelets. Also, I think the thing was that like if somebody was like fucking with your br- so you're supposed to trade them. And if in the process of trading them, somebody broke it off you, you were supposed to do that sexual act with them. Yeah. And I ha- can't help but wonder how much sexual assault was the um, like effect of those bracelets. It was truly the beginning of the Me Too movement. Probably it's like <laughs> it's like what I broke a black one off her. It's, it's the rules. She had she deserved it. <laughs> when you snap a yellow, you snap a yellow. <laughs> I snapped a red one, and it means anal. <laughs> so, so here we go. Welcome to eighth grade, Cindy. Uh, um, listen, I hate to end the podcast here, but my foot computer is about to die. Um, and uh. I think that would end it itself. And I feel like your mother's just staring at you from across the room, threatening to make another phone call. I mean, if I give her any more minutes without attention, she's going to have her titties out on this podcast. So I have to go soon. It'd be good. Good for clicks. I don't know. <laughs> it's true. Um, but yeah, we good. We're good. If that happened, even if it only happened for one second, the episode title would have to be Kim's mom shows her tits. It's true. We should just make it that anyway. <laughs> to, <get people> to, <laughs> to watch a fucking episode. And if you watch it just for the episode and you're upset you didn't get it, fuck you for only watching for my mom's tits. Um, yeah, Jesus, you're fucking sick. Rude. But thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Broad Topics. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon, on Instagram and TikTok at Kim Congdon. Alex, what about you, my love? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at I am Alex Scar. And check out all of the shows at gasdigitalnetwork.com. If you sign up with promo code TOPICS, T O P I X, you're going to get a 14 day free trial with access to everything on demand, as well as the live chat, bonus content, and more. So go do that right away. All right. You heard her guys and we'll see you guys next week. Yay. All right. Bye. Bye.